Hi, this is Craig. I'm back in the lab this evening with my Charm High T48 VA. We'll talk about what I found today with, with my text board and some other uh, findings that I have on the machine here. I'd like to thank all those people that watched, and I did get some questions in that I'll answer right here. Uh, so the board looks pretty good. There was uh, one solder bridge, and it was on a really tiny part. The, uh, the TI-80 deconverter is an MSOP-10, MSOP-10, which is a three millimeter part with 10 leads. And so the, the lead spacing on that thing is like 0.2 millimeters. So I had one little bridge on that. The rest of the time, I didn't have really any bridges anywhere on it, certainly not on any ICs. Everything was soldered in okay. Those diodes were were kind of not done very well, and I'll, I'll explain why that was in a minute. Uh, <clears throat> but I got it wired up to the point where uh, I was able to check the power supply circuit, and it does the uh, the polarity inversion protection circuitry works. I don't want to tell you how that was inadvertently tested, but it, it does work. And then I, I mounted one of these... Uh, you know, little inexpensive uh, cheap buck converters on here. This is running a, it's running a LM uh, 20, 2596. This is a three amp uh, um, power supply, basically a, a bucking converter that takes uh, up to 35 volts and kicks it down to five volts. And this board actually supplies the Raspberry Pi with the power and all the five volts necessary for the board. Um, I don't want to explain too much about the design, but it does work. I did connect up an Arduino to this instead of a Raspberry Pi because it's Raspberry Pi would have to go through a boot process in order to, you know, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's a little tedious to get the Raspberry Pi in there. I'll, I'll do that afterwards. The, to do a hardware checkout, uh, I just downloaded an I2C scanner for an Arduino. I hooked up a, um, a Nano, or I mean a Uno to this thing, and it found five of my six devices, but it also found a mystery device at some other address and I don't know what's going on there but five of the six of them are there which is like hallelujah <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the board uh, without any microprocessor draws about 20 milliamps and um, so something is eh, that's probably okay all right so on to what I found um, the first thing I figured out was a lot of the diodes, I'm talking about the LEDs along this bottom edge here, weren't placed very well. And the reason is, I believe, is that I was using the wrong nozzle. What I had in there last night was a 504 and a 505. And I got a little table that shows me that the, the uh, 504 is for 0805, 0805 parts up to 1206 and the 505 is for uh, bigger parts like ICs and you know quad flat packs and that kind of thing as well as those you know those big big LEDs uh, so I most everything on here is a 603 uh, so I changed it over to a 503 nozzle this particular charm high comes with four nozzles uh, I put in the five. What did I put in there? Five hundred three, and I will say that getting that nozzle out requires a lot of force, and that's kind of scary. There, you know, it uses this 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 uh, uh, ball bearing attachment thing that holds the nozzle up into the into into the um, the adapter that goes on the uh, stepper motor, and that, those those ball bearings are held in by a a little rubber. It's like a it's like a big flat rubber band, and it took a lot of force to pull that thing back out because there's no way to relax the uh, ball bearings. Uh, they they just have to naturally pull out that rubber band, and it, it's not good. It should have a retaining ring that lets you pull it up and pull it out. So that's um, <clears throat> that was a little surprising how hard that was to get out. Um, so those are those two things there. Uh, what I found out, uh, okay, so the two questions I got, I got one from Darian that says, should he get a VB, which is one that has the, the additional 29 feeders on this end? Uh, so this, you know, that's, that's a really a question up to what your workflow is and what the complexity of the board you're using are, is, you know, so, <clears throat> um, cause I'm using, I don't know, what am I, I got, well, you can see what my density is. 
Uh, <clears throat> one thing I do know is don't screw around with this stupid, this tape thing, this extender thing that I found at down at the hardware store. It's just a pain in the butt. They they come off when you least expect it. It's, it's ugly. Go ahead and buy the real thing. I think they come in a box of 500. I don't know that's a lot. That'll last you for the rest of your life. But um, just grab some of those instead of, of doing this monkey business that, that I'm using. Or eat up the parts. The, you know, you're doing assembly. It's gonna, there's going to be a certain cost to it, certain overhead. And so if, you know, the little parts, the passives and stuff, you don't care. Just rip the, just rip the, the uh, retention plastic off and wrap it around and then just lose those parts. Uh, but for the larger parts, you know, that, that'll be up to your, your call. So on the VB side, I don't know. I, I don't know how complex your boards are going to be. Um, it is, it is uh, you know, I, I think the kind of work that I'm doing, I'm not really doing manufacturing. I'm just doing prototype work. So, you know, a big run for me might be 10 boards, you know, maybe 20. I don't know. So this is going to work fine for me. Okay. Uh Lewis writes in, he says, hey, thanks for the video. I want to welcome, uh, thank you guys for writing in. Um, he's thinking about getting a VA. So I bought this machine because I wanted the touch screen so that I can have somebody come in here and, and uh, manipulate the machine, not me, manipulate it as an operator and just run parts and run boards. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, that, yeah, I mean, it's a goal, but just keep them from having, actually having to have a computer. But the other thing that, that I needed to consider was all the space. I, you know, these, this is a big machine. There's, there's, uh, you know, I got to have room for another laptop or a touch pad, or I don't know what you're going to, what would you put over here to run the, the, uh, charm high software. Uh, but you're going to need something else. It'd be a lot easier to, to use a keyboard over there than to use this, because this is a resistive touchscreen, to use this resistive touchscreen to enter in numbers, you know, to move the, the head around and that kind of thing. It might be easier, or well, certainly a lot cheaper, to save the money and use the laptop that either you have or buy another one just for this. Um, you know, that's, that's I'm kind of 50-50 eh, on that right now. But I do like to just come over here and tinker with this thing, you know, and without having to boot up and work, you know, work, come over to the keyboard and then come back over here and come back. Yes, it's whatever. All right. Well, anyway, um, what else? I got things set up. Oh, the, the diode question. Why were they all, why did I blow through so many diodes? When you set up your tapes, uh, the machine knows, you know, a relative position of where the the uh, the the feeder tape is going to be uh, but it turns out that that one feeder number 10 you need to fine-tune that position for the pick place so when the head comes over it needs to go right down the center of the part and I, I looked at that I looked at that this evening and it turns out that I wasn't uh, so what it was doing that in combination with the larger nozzle, uh, it was getting, it was, uh, it was off. It was probably using half the nozzle was picking up the part and it just wasn't working very well. So, you know, uh, live and learn, you know, I ate up 85 diodes or something like that. Uh, and well, thank goodness it wasn't a more expensive part. Um, but you do need to set those for your, your parts that you put in here. Now, once this thing has been fed through, you probably don't have to tune that. But to do the initial setup, you really should tune the new tapes that you put in and make sure that the pick, placement, the pick location is good. And then you have to do that after you, you verify that the pull pin is in the right position as well. So you, you come over in the calibrate menu not in the calibrate menu, in the, um, what is it, the, the diagnostic menu, and check the pull position for each, for each, each one, and get the tape in the right position so it's going to pull. And then 
you don't set the 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 position on the diagnostic screen. You have to. I think you have to do that over in the the job file itself. Um, so that's that's kind of what I found. So I'm. It's late here, and I'm really exhausted. I really was wanting to run another board or even two boards this evening. Um, but I, I just can't do it. I don't have any energy. And if I stay up late, which I can, I will end up getting um, my, <laughs> it, yeah, it's not, it won't be good because I'll get a cold and then I can't have that. So I'm going to go home, rest up. I did set up the extra machine here. Uh, what I did find with this, when I, when, I, when I checked my stuff out was, I was the diodes that I was putting in there were not even the right size. They were, they were too big. The, there's, there are um, uh, kickback or what do they call it? The, uh, or whatever. The, the, all the, these old, these uh, mechanical relays, I have a, a flyback diode or a kickback. What do you call that thing? I don't know, whatever. You have a diode in there to, uh, to handle the current when you open up the MOSFET that controls that, that inductor, basically. And um, I was using the wrong size, and then the, it wasn't even fitting on the pads. So I fixed that this evening. I'm going to run more diodes this evening. I pulled those out for tomorrow, the next board run. I'm going to pull those out and uh, fix that as well. So my next run will be pretty good, but just... You know, lot, whoa, whoa, don't want to drop that. The last night's run, um, I'm really happy with the fact that I got uh, six devices to answer on I squared C without even having to do any debugging is awesome. Um, uh, that's pretty rare. Uh, but, you know, it's good. It's good. So we're running another board in the next couple of days. Uh, we're actually going to run two. And I will. I want to get these shipped out um, almost immediately because uh, we have to write the software in order to control lights on the plane. All right, well, thanks for watching. Keep, uh, keep your comments coming. I'll see if I can address those as, as I need to. Okay, have a good evening.